many have lost their lives because of this virus. Uh -huh. We would love for this virus to just disappear. Uh -huh. But we know, Heavenly Father, in your time, yes. in your time, yes. you will speak and it will, will disappear. Uh -huh. We know if you speak, it will go away. Yes. There will be no more virus, no more sickness, no more dying. One day, one day, if we keep our hands in the Master's hand, uh -huh. keep trusting in Him, yes. oh, Heavenly Father, He will make a way like no other. Uh -huh. Oh, Heavenly Father, I lift up the viewers that's watching my Facebook this morning. Yes. They may be going through a trial. Uh -huh. Bless them, Heavenly Father. Bless the family this morning. Yes. Bless those in the hospitals. Those that bound to a hospital bed, yes. they may be watching by Facebook. Let them know that they that they can trust in a risen Savior, yes. who has power over <coughs> heaven and earth, right in the palm of His hand. Yes. He don't need no medic. He don't need no medicine. Uh -huh. He is the medicine. Yes. He is the chief yes. physician. Yes. Oh, He's our all in all. Yes. He's our everything. Uh -huh. Just thank you, Lord, thank you, Father. Thank you, Heavenly thank Father. You. Thank you. Let the service go forth in your name. Yes. I pray that the preach word will touch someone that's watching by Facebook. Yes. Wherever they are, whatever they're doing, they may bow down on their knees and say, Yes, Lord, yes. to your will and to your way. Uh -huh. Oh, Heavenly Father, we're not, we're not sure if we're going to make it through this, through this year. But we know that you are all in all. Yes. You know the beginning and you know the end. Yes. You know the outcome. Uh -huh. Just keep trusting in you. Yes. Now, Father, as I close this prayer, mm -hmm. many will be marching tomorrow uh, remembering Dr. Martin Luther King. Yes. But I pray, Heavenly Father, even those that don't know a risen Savior, I pray before it's all said and done, they will, too, will bow down on their knees and say, Yes, Lord, to your will and to your way. Yes. Oh, Heavenly Father, remembering a mighty man of God yes. who gave his life. We thank you, we praise you, we give you honor and glory forever. In Jesus' name, hallelujah and amen.
somebody had prayed for me. I, I don't know about you, but I'm thank God for the praying saints, the old saints. They, God is calling over here, Pastor. We just talked about God calling for home. But this is the old saints. I miss them now. Yeah. I miss them. We have our first lady here also, Pastor. We have thank her for being with us this morning. I, I, she knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. Amen. Yes. There was a time. of the saints. Amen. Amen. Before we went to the doctor, took a pill, we would fall on our knees and, and jump in. Put it to God. Amen. And some of us know what we get time to count the knee. We were feeling much better. We need to pray. It's a time for prayer that my brother just said. So we will have a, a little altar prayer this morning. Those of you who are at home, please take time just to stop what you're doing, whatever you're doing. I pray that you're watching us. But let's sit and be still for a minute. As he said in his word, be still and know that I am God. Sometimes we forget God because we get so busy. Now we're home, show the place we claim I can't go nowhere, anything. It's a time to share your life with the Lord. Amen. Maybe the Lord said, you know what? It's time for y'all saints to get back to where you used to do. When prayer was in the morning and breakfast, prayer was in the evening. And you didn't eat dinner before prayer. Amen. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. So let us follow his. Dear Father, come in the name of your Son, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this time of worship, Father. We thank you for what's already going on, Father. I feel your spirit moving in this building this morning, Father. Father, my dear brother, we really said a prayer this morning. Stir me up, Father. Make me think about how many prayers have gone on on behalf of the saints through the years, Father. I don't know about you, by the sound of my voice, you know you had some rough and serious times, but somebody prayed for you. Somebody covered you with their prayers. I thank God for grandmothers and sisters and those aunties and all those distant relatives. And you know, it said that, oh, Africa takes a whole village to raise a child. We didn't have villages, but we had our churches, Father. I don't know about you. I've never turned out in church like that, baby, to admit that anybody in the church would hold your child and take care of them for you. And I thank God for that. I thank God for the prayer of the saints, which is a sweet, savory smell into the nostrils of our Lord and Savior. I don't know about you, but I thank God for what he brought me through. Now, this 2020 or 2021, but the years we're seeing that God has always seen fit to be me through. I've had some ups and downs. The saints, you had some ups and downs also, but God has brought you through. I don't know about you, but I say thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the faith of the saints, Father. Oh, God, I thank you for that great man who celebrated Lord Martin Luther King, Father. And he didn't free us from Egypt, but he freed us from the wilderness, and he freed us from that, 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 that prejudice, Father, that was gone. We got a mighty long way to go, but he started to thank you for that. Oh, Father, now I need to talk to you about the saints. We've got notices of people being called home, Father. Father, I know we feel, Father, the loss of those who call home. But God, we need to understand something. We always want that people to be here, Father. But we're so, so, so selfish, Father. We think if they're not here with us around the table, eating a meal or something, that they're not here. But let me tell you, Father, when you bring them home, Father, they are here, Father. All the troubles and trials of this world no longer troubles them, Father. It says your word to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. And we thank you for that, Father. So we pray for those families that are going through bereavement right now, Father. We know, Father, that you will take care of them, Father. Oh, Father, somebody has lost a loved one just in this short time of this new year, Father. But we must understand that they say they're in a better place right now, Father. I don't know about you, Father. I have some people that's on the bed of affliction right now. Text my society, my brother's in the hospital, Father. But I know one thing, Father. He's not alone because, Father, you are there with them, Father. I pray for all those who are laying on their bed of affliction this morning. I pray for those who are going through this pandemic, Father. I pray for those who have lost loved ones, Father. But we also need to give thanks this morning that some of us are still here, Father. And Father, you are still in the blessed business, Father. And we thank you for that, Father. But Father, I know one thing, Father. I'm grateful this morning, Father. I came in here with a little trouble on my heart, Father. But you know there is a bomb in Gilead, Father. You are the medicine for all my ears and pains. Church, I want you to know something. Wherever you are, you need to give God some thanks this morning. You need to let them know that you're glad that you woke up this morning. Somebody didn't wake up this morning. 
this morning. Somebody was not at home. Somebody woke up in a hospital bed. Somebody woke up in the nerve, but God said, I, I woke you up this morning. Don't be complaining about what you don't have, but be amazed about what you do have. I, I don't know about you, but I'm just going to say thank you this morning. Oh, this year started out a little early. Oh, Father God, I'm glad I'm here this year, Father. But Father, we pray for the churches, Father, that's open. Father, we thank you for the opportunity, Father. Though some of us complain about what we have and what we don't have, and the church's doors are not open. I want to tell everybody right now, the church doors are never shut. I don't care what you say, those doors are open on a hill called Calvary over 2,000 years ago when Jesus died on the cross for our sins. I'm telling the doors are still open to the church. You may be sitting at home, but you know what? Your door is a church right now. You may be up a friend's house, but if you, right now you're still in church. We need to say thank you this morning. I don't know about anybody else. I don't have to be confined to a building to give God some praise and thanks this morning because he's worthy of the praise. Because I remember one of my favorite verses. He said, while we were yet sinners, he gets in this kind of God on the cross of When I was not worthy, when you were he sent his son Jesus to die on that cross of Calvary for each and every one of us. I don't know what you're going through right now, but I know somebody who loves you, who cares about what you're going through, and his name is Jesus. We need to fall on your knees this morning. Call on the name of Jesus. Whatever your trial is, whatever your tribulation, whatever your trouble is, he has a cure for it. You just need to call on him. Somebody is calling on him this morning. Somebody loves
no, no turning back. Paul tells us, speaking of himself, that we must forget those things which are behind yeah. and press on to the upward call that is in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 You, you may be seated. And we're understanding that, that in this day and age, and I, I came, you know, I should have known it all along, but sometimes we get focused on the negative things. Have you ever been focused on the negative thing? Uh, every now and then I, I look at TV and I see all of the nonsense that's on TV. I see all of the division and the name calling and, and, and uh, everything that goes on. And, and we can get caught up in that mess if we're not careful. And then it was on Saturday, and I remember that through sitting with my family through Zoom and talking. God truly is a healing God. He's a blessing God. Amen? Yeah. He watches over us day in and day out. There's been sickness. There's been heartaches. There's been pain. There's been death. But God is still reigning, and he's still taking care of us. I heard Dr. Norman say it's, it's absolutely correct. We miss those that have passed on. Uh, Mother Price and others that have uh, going on into glory, but the words say, this old earth is not our home. We're just so journeying through, amen? amen? And our whole hope and our whole desire, Paul would say, as we look forward for the, uh, uh, the call of the upward call, is that one day this will be all over, and when it's all over, we'll be in glory. Hallelujah. We have a new earth and a new heaven one of these days, but in the meantime, we just need to keep on running for the Lord, amen? We need to keep on running, and, and for me, not complaining. But keep on running, realizing how good God is, and how He's blessing us, and how He's keeping us, how He's watching over us day in and day out, providing for us. Sometimes we might think we don't have enough. Sometimes our money gets funny, that aches and pain, but God is still right there with it. He said, He promised me, and He promised you. You'll never put more on you than we can bear. So if we're in the middle of a storm, He's in the boat with us, and He's taking care of us. And we must trust Him. Remember, Lot's wife, and no turning back. Luke, the great physician, a disciple, an apostle called by Jesus. He began to write this, and just for a brief turn back a little bit, we're going to look at verse 1 because he is teaching us how to live. Mm -hmm. On first Sunday, we, we preached on the call that out of Philippians, no turning back, and we went to Ephesians. And said, every day we have to have the whole honor of God on. That we don't fight against flesh and blood, but we fight against principalities, uh, 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 darkness, and, and high places. And we don't fight against one another. In this lesson, uh, uh, we are saying that no turning back. And we're going to remember what happened to Lot's wife. But in Mark chapter 17, verse 1, then he said to his disciples, it is impossible that no offense should come, but woe to him through whom the offense do come. Mm -hmm. He said, if you're living in this world, you're going to have some heartaches and pain. People are going to get on your very last nerve. They're going to lie on you. They're going to talk bad about you. But don't worry about that. But woe to the one that is doing that. <clears throat> he said, we must love one another, take care of one another. And Jesus said, it would have been better for that person who started up a mess that there was a millstone tied around his neck and he was thrown into the sea. Then we go down to verse 5 and 6. He began to talk about faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. During this pandemic, during the funny times when we have money shortages and food de deprivation and, and everything seemed to be turned upside down, we walk by faith and not by sight. Jesus said we have the faith of a grain of mustard seed. We could say to that mulberry bush, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it would obey us. In Jesus, all power is in us. In Jesus, all power is in us through him. All we have to do is trust and obey. And God says, he will be with us. In verse 11, Jesus met 10 lepers. And our country is full of lepers today, not necessarily the disease of leprosy, but people whose hearts and minds have been uh, taken away from the things of Almighty God. They are looking at the things of this old world. They are putting their heart and their money and everything into the things of this old world or into themselves, trying to hold on to what they have and 
and, and, and not helping anyone else out, but forgetting Jesus Christ, they came across these ten lepers, and they stayed afar off, and they said to the Lord, Lord, bless us. And God heard them and healed them. The Bible says they went on their way, but one came back and gave glory and honor to God. Church, we just need to give glory and honor to God. In whatever situation we might find ourselves in. Yeah. He's saying trust him and honor him and glorify him. If you have a voice to say, I can't say, but well, we need to honor God with our voices, amen? Every gift that he has given us, we need to use those gifts to build up the kingdom of God. As Reverend Norman has already stated, the church is not shut down. We may not come out to the church house that we, that we used to, but the church is alive and well and wrapped around the world. It is in Fresno. It is in everywhere. We are as believers. We are carrying the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen? Yeah. The problem is, and we'll get into this a little later, we keep our mouths shut. God is blessing us, and we want to sit down on our laurels and not tell somebody about the goodness of God. God gave us gifts and skills and talents, but we have closed them up to the kingdom of God, and people are cursed. People are dying because somehow we think because of the pandemic, we don't have a voice anymore. We, we need to get ready to do what God has called us to do. The lepers, and one came back. And then in verse 20, he began to talk to the Pharisees. Now when he was asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God will come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God, of God does not come by observers, nor will they say, See here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. God's rule for a child of God, those that love the Lord, <clears throat> His rule is in us. We seek Him every day. We must pray every day, study, and we have just a little talk with Jesus every day. We'll make everything all right, amen? He gave us commands, and the two he, he left with us to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor how? Like you love yourself. But all of the commandments hang on these. If we loved each other like we loved ourselves, we wouldn't have seen what we saw on the 6th of, of, of January at, at, at the uh, Capitol building. If we love each other like we love ourselves as children of God, you wouldn't see the disturbance in the streets and the fights that's going on. If we love one another, marriages would be intact. They wouldn't be falling apart. Families would not be scuffling over this and that, trying to figure out how they could get this or that from, from this person. If we love one another, let we love ourselves. But most importantly, if we love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, then we would know how to love. I'm afraid that in, in our society today, that love issue is a big problem. We have more less than we have love. We have more looking out for ourselves than looking out for someone else. Then he said, we must, the kingdom of God lives in us, and we must abide by that, knowing that he is in us. He lives in us through his power of his Holy Spirit. Then he says this, and they will say to you, look here or look there, but the kingdom is not there. Do not go after them or follow them. For as the lightning is flashed that flashes out of the one part of the heaven and then shines in another part of heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in the days coming. The kingdom lives in us. And people want to know when Christ is coming back. And Christ was giving them a warning. He said this, remember Noah. And, and, and Christ can move anytime he wants to move, amen? amen? No man knows the day of the hour when he's coming back. But our task is to live so that we will see him one day. See him for ourselves in glory, whenever he calls us home. But in the meantime, we must live that way. The Bible says, if we, if we read in, in, in Luke 17, he says, when Christ come back, the day of the Lord, the kingdom lives in us, but the day of the Lord which is coming will come like it came in the day of Noah. When people were marrying and drinking and eating and living and had forgotten all about the things of God, and oh Noah preached for 120 years that it's going to rain. Set your life in order because it's going to rain and the whole world is going to be destroyed. It was a time when everything had looked, looked like everybody was turning their back on Almighty God. Mm -hmm. 
seemed like there were divisions everywhere. And God said, I, I repent that I believed that I will destroy them all. <coughs> Didn't it rain? Mm -hmm. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. I don't know how long this pandemic will be with us, but didn't it rain? And the rain came, and can you see the people that Noah had preached to, that uh, get into the ark of safety, that ark of safety, what? Get into Jesus Christ. Accept that wonderful gift of Calvary's cross. We need to go out and preach the word, and preach the word. The Bible says, if we read 17, that they refused to get into the ark. And the rain came. Saints, God is coming back. Jesus Christ will return. Are you in the ark of safety? How about your children, your grandchildren? Have you told them about the love of Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. Then he went on down and tell us about Abraham and Lot. Abraham left out of uh, 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 Ur of the Chaldeans, mm -hmm. took his family, and Lot went with him. Yeah. And, and, and as they traveled, they were blessed immensely because Lot, Abraham loved the Lord. And God had promised Abraham that his seed would be multiplied. Saints, God loves us. And just like uh, Abraham, when we <coughs> trust in the Lord, our seeds will be multiplied. Our children will grow up to love the Lord. He will keep us and watch over us. God told him to leave where he, where he was. And he said, and go and I'll let you know when you get there. Isn't it amazing sometimes God calls us to go and we want to know where, we, where he wants to send us what he wants us to do. God said, no, just go. And I'll, I'll open up that door when you get there. I'll let you know where you are when you get there. When you're going to Walmart, Kmart, wherever you're going to, just go and be prepared to tell somebody about the love of Jesus Christ. God desires that none should be lost. And he's using me and he's using all of us to go and tell somebody. It may be our neighbor down the street, but they come and walk in that dog. We can stop and say hello and pet the dog and tell them about the love of Jesus Christ at the same time. Amen. God has never stopped drawing people unto him. But he said, just like it was in the day of Noah, people are not going to listen to you. But it's going to rain. Mm -hmm. Then he said, just like Abraham and Lot, when, when, when they went, when Abraham and Lot went into, into Sodom, and Sodom was a terrible place. Uh, people there had no regard for God all themselves. And Lot was there, and he and his wife, and, and, and his daughters, and his son-in-law. And then the angel of the Lord came and, and was telling uh, 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 Lot, you have to get out of the city, because I'm going to destroy the city. God is sending things that will destroy. God is not necessarily sending the uh, uh, coronavirus, but he allowed it to come. Uh -huh. He allowed it to come. He could have stopped it all if he wanted to. But I'm, I'm here to tell you that this is a wake-up point for us. It's time to get into the opera safety. It's time to come out of Sodom and Gomorrah. It is time to get up from where we are in this old world, thinking of the things of this old world more than the things of God. Thinking about how we're going to get over down here rather than how we're going to get up to there. It is time to realize that God is the King of Kings. He is the Alpha and the Omega. And he left us with an agape love. It's time to understand that this whole world is, is fading. Death is real. One day the eastern sky is going to open wide and the dead in Christ shall rise first. That those that remain shall be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. Are you in the ark of safety? Are you out of Sodom and Gomorrah? Have you been washed in the blood of the man? Mm -hmm. Bible says, just like it was in the day of Noah and in the days of Lot. He goes down and he says, one of in this day that he was teaching, he said, you will look forward to one of these days. Isn't it amazing that we sit here in an empty church, going out live, preaching to people, and I guarantee you we have people listening all around the world, more so than we would have that the building would be. So the word must go out. You can't stop the word. But it seemed as if, and Jesus said, people don't want to hear you. There was a time when people came running to the church house. When trouble came, they flocked into the church house. What did we see now? Have no regards for the church building or the church people. They will scandalize your name. 
And, and, and Jesus said, it's going to be hard. We must go and preach. But it's going to be hard preaching. And I'm thankful that he emptied the church so that we can come up with the idea of ways that he has in plan and planted in our mind, the vision that he had given us so that we can go out and preach the word all the way around. We must always remember that God is able. God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ever hope for or think. God is always there with us. People may not want to hear it, but we must go all around the world preaching the gospel. They put people in prison for preaching the gospel. They're going to do it again. They put three people and, 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 and they isolated them for preaching the gospel. Don't you think we are isolated now? Yeah. But we can't stop preaching the gospel, uh -huh. saints. We must keep on because people need to know Jesus. Yeah. They need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. It's the gospel. It's the good news that's going to save people. It's the good news that's going to keep us. And he said in that one verse in 32, he said, remember Lot's wife. Well, Lot came to a Lot's wife came to a Lot. She came out of Ur of the Chaldeans and she went into uh, Galilee and all through that area and traveled with her husband and, and her uh, father, uh, uncle Abraham. Saw how God blessed them. Saw all that God did for them. Gave them prime land because Abraham just uh, Lot. Abraham decided to take the land that he gave Lot the first opportunity. He took the best place. Got into the city and their daughters married people of that city. And, and Lot sat in the gate. But Lot was a good man. And, and his wife kind of enjoyed the luxury of that city. Sometimes we enjoy the things of this old world. Amen. More so than what we should uh, enjoy the things of God. And, and Lot's wife got all tangled up and tied up in the things of this world. And, and, and we don't know anything else about her. I looked through Josephus, and they did give a name. I won't call it now, but they, they did say this was possibly her name. The Bible says he just called, they just called it Lot's wife. Mm -hmm. But Lot's wife was there, enjoying the pleasantries, enjoying the food, enjoying the relationship, enjoying everything that went on that, that she could enjoy in Sodom. But all of a sudden, God said, that enough is enough for sin. That enough is enough for the ways of, 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 of the evil one. I will send down fire and brimstone and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He's going to one day send down fire and brimstone to destroy this whole earth. Mm -hmm. We are going through the book of Revelation now. Praise God, the church will be out of here. But he's going to rain down fire. The streams will turn to blood. Aren't you glad you're living in a time like this when we can say God is still working and God is still on the, on the throne? Even though it gets tougher every day, we can't give up. Even though people don't want to hear, we must keep pressing on. Remember last one. Uh -huh. She turned and looked back. Yes. God said, no going back. Uh -uh. No turning back. Mm -hmm. No desiring the things of the world. Paul said, I beat my body into subjection. We died to the things. Oh, yeah, we need food. We need transportation. We need shelter. But don't let that stuff have us over what God can give you. Mm -hmm. God said, trust him. He'll give you the desires of your heart. The light in him. He'll take care of everything else. Lot's wife looked back. Uh -huh. Some said she wanted to go back. And she longed to be back there where the party was. Mm -hmm. She longed to be back there where, the, where, where things were going on in the, in the bars and in the, and the, and the cocktail parties and all that stuff that was going on. She longed the stuff that before she got saved, and, and if she was saved, I don't believe she was, but before she met Lot and Abraham, she began to want that stuff that she ran into. Since when God came into our life and saved us, those things, the old things passed away. And behold, all things became new. Our hearts and our desire was to trust God. Oh, we messed up. We are not perfect. But when we don't want to go back to the old habits and the old ways, doing the old things that God called us to do. We want to press forward. No turning back. Pressing forward. Calling on the name of the Lord every day. Trusting him to get us from one point to the other. Yes. Our task is to keep our hands, as someone has already said, in his hand. He's holding tight. I'm glad I don't have to hold his hand. He's holding my hand. Because I might turn it loose, but when he holds on to you, 
He has to strong. And there's no turning back. No turning back. We trust the Lord. And he says, don't look back. My wife is a remembrance, a remembrance and a reminder to us where God has brought us from. He came into this world through 42 generations, born of a virgin, not to live but to die. And he lived and, and ministered for 33 and a half years. Though that three and a half years, he suffered many things. In, in Luke 17, he said, the day of the Lord can't come. The kingdom can't come until I suffer many things. He was falsely accused. Sometimes we are falsely accused. But he never said a wrong thing word. They carried him up Calvary's cross, whipped him, naked and exposed to the world. Sometimes we think we're in the middle of a storm, but think what they did to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Think what we did to him. They whipped him, they scourged him. He was the bloody mess, and then they stretched him out on an on a old cross and nailed his hands and nailed his feet with a thorn of cross, a crown of thorns on his head, and raised him up between heaven and earth. And he said, If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. When they lifted up Jesus, Satan lost the battle. One thief on the cross said, Forgive me. And Jesus said to him, this day you shall be with me in paradise. And others say, come down and save yourself with me too. He perished. We must understand that Christ died so that we might live and we might have hope and that we might have joy. Mm -hmm. And there's no turning back to the old ways. When we've been born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb, we surrender all. I surrender all. You surrender all to him. And he will take care of us through this pandemic. He will take care of us through cancer. Would take care of us through whatever come up against us. I heard, I read that if they did it to him, just think what they're going to do to us. Mm -hmm. We must love those who hate us, persecute us, say all manner of evil against us also. Love and not curse. Remember Lot's wife. Mm -hmm. She desired the things of this whole world. Yeah. Our hope is in Jesus. Yeah. Our hope is in heavenly things. Mm -hmm. One day we'll walk on the street paid with gold. One day we'll have no more pain, no more heartaches, no more sorrow. One day everything will be howdy howdy and never goodbye. No more death, no more hurts feelings rolling. We are uh, living in an area now where, where it seems like every uh, 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 hospital bed is full. One day there will be no more hospitals. But in the meantime, church, we need to carry the gospel. Yeah. We must carry the good news. Nothing can lock down the good news. Only I can do that. I can lock it down in me, become like the Dead Sea, I can study all day long and never give it out. I'm just dead. No use to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So study the word. Mm -hmm. Go find somebody to tell them about the love of Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, I tell you the secret. You don't have to find it. God will bring it to you every time. Mm -hmm. Just say, Lord, give me one more today. Yeah. Just give me one more. And maybe that person you can't stand. But he'll bring that person to you. In some way, he'll give you the opportunity to tell him about a man mm -hmm. who gave his life so that you might live. Remember Lot's wife. Mm -hmm. And remember, no matter what you're going through, Jesus is right there with you. He said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. See, the wages of sin is death. We work our way to hell. That's the payment for our work. Wages of sin is death. But the gift is free. Yeah. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. How do you get this? If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe within your heart, look where I'm pointing, not the thing that comes from that, but in, in your essence, that God has raised him from the dead. The Bible says, you shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Saved from eternal death yeah. to eternal glory. How do you get that? This is Lord Jesus. Need you. I am the sinner. Come into my life and save me. Mm -hmm. Revelation 3 says, very good, it says, No, I stand at the door and knock. That's Jesus speaking. The knock is on the inside. He said, I stand at the door and knock. If you open the door, he said, I'll come in mm -hmm. and I'll live for my son. Saints, sinners seeking salvation. We all were sinners needing salvation. Jesus is that salvation. 
Today is a good day of repentance. Yeah. Just trust in the Lord. And then love one another. Take care of one another. Be there for them. And one day, when the eastern skies open wide, I heard old preacher say, what a parade that will be. They'll come from the north, south, east, and the west, shouting victory. They will all be caught up in the sky. Can you see that day? That parade. Mm -hmm. See mom and daddy, grandma. I've never seen my uh, grandfathers. They all go past the world more. Mm -hmm. But I see them in glory. But I was told they love the Lord. God bless you. God keep you. And I uh, just want to let you know that we're still reaching around the world. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your giving. I appreciate that. And the tithe to Dr. Kennedy is given to Yellow Fire. Just look at me. I'm following the president. You can mail it into church, 101 West Clinton, Fresno, California, 93705. Give us a call. We have people who can come by. But more so than your finances, we appreciate you. We appreciate and need the finances, but we truly appreciate you. Call us, and if you need anything from us, just call the church office. Let us know. And if we can help in any kind of way, we'll be there. God bless you. God keep you. And you just have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day. And enjoy life. And remember, like I said before, enjoy. Mm -hmm. Stop looking at the negatives and look at towards heaven. And see what God is doing in your life. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.